Hey guys, Halloween's coming up in about a week. Um, in 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 that respect, I want to discuss something that's causing people to be afraid, sometimes uh, excessively so, to the point of we would almost call it trauma. We would call it, you know, uh, something that's almost a phobia, you might say. So. The topic I really want to focus on is eternal punishment, or some would call it hell. Some would call it, you know, there's multiple variations, but it's most commonly taught in evangelical Christianity. Catholicism has a different take. They, they teach about purgatory, and there's... Um, there's not an unending torment, but the religion I was raised in, apostolic Pentecostalism, it was very much pushed that if you die without following their particular plan of salvation, you were, you had no hope. I mean, you were out of it. You were going to be falling and burning um, you were just going to be suffering without end forever. Now, there's a couple things I want to address here. We're not going to go deep, deep into the weeds, but really just kind of what are, what are the basic ways we can, we can say this, this isn't valid. This isn't real. Um, I think to start with, it, it, there's a philosophical concept that a punishment needs to fit the crime, right? So this idea that someone breaks your window, they're only on the hook for the cost of the window, right? We're not going to make them punish, we're not going to send them to be punished with a 10-year jail sentence. You know that would be absurd, right? It's it's a it's a two or three hundred dollar window. It's 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 not worth that punishment. And it, it, we could definitely say that even if a person was the epitome of evil, right? They they butchered millions of people. They they tortured. They starved people. They you know pick any one of the tyrants of the early twentieth century. Um, essentially, even those people are not deserving of hell because their crimes were in a finite period of time and they affected a finite number of people. Therefore, they, they shouldn't be punished for, for millions of years on end in the worst pain we can possibly fathom. That just it isn't it isn't just but also it just doesn't logically line up so even what even more so we have to look at what about the people that just have no possible real blame that could be placed on them right they're not hurting anyone they're doing their best to be a good person they're doing their best to be just a moral and ethical human being up until the day they die. They have committed no crimes as far as we would consider them crimes. They haven't done anything that's really worthy of this thousands or millions or billions of years of, of torment. So that's one side of it. The other side of it, we have to look at, you know, where did the concept of hell come from? Because what a lot of people think of when they, when they think of hell they're really thinking of like Dante's Inferno. They're conjuring all this imagery of the, the devils and demons that have pitchforks and they're red and they've got fangs and claws and, you know, <laughs> all these tortures and all these evil beings. This came from artwork that was dreamed up, you know, by, by some person that really took no inspiration from scripture they were really just making up 
something that appealed to uh, the common the common sort of um, taste for that time period. And if we're going strictly by Scripture, strictly by what we see in the New Testament, you know, it, it's it's really here. Here's what's really silly. You know, we can't get Christians to really agree on what hell is. Some Christians say, well, if you die and you're lost, you're just vaporized. Like you you just vanish from existence. You're gone, and you you don't exist at all. You have no more pain. You have no more anything. No more consciousness. And others say, yeah, you're trapped somewhere for eternity. Well. If Christians can't agree on that, and there's such a huge spectrum of differing opinions on if someone dies with ignorance about the Bible, they've never heard of the Bible, they've never heard the gospel, they have no knowledge whatsoever, the Catholic Church says they're not lost. They, they go to purgatory, right? They've, they've just, they have no blame in this scenario because really they didn't they couldn't possibly have deserved that punishment and i think that's an accurate and that's a, a valid stance to take and and then you've got generally as you go towards evangelical and baptists and pentecostals and various protestant groups they lean more towards just just punish everyone doesn't matter what what they believe when they died, unless they followed the exact formula that we believe, they're done, right? They're 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 frying. So there's there's a twofold or threefold problem here. You know, one is hell is really not logically a, a, a valid argument. It's not a valid concept. Um, to the various aspects of Christianity, the different denominations. None of them really seem to have a consistent view on what the Bible actually says. Um, but also, you know, the Bible is pushed as, as this cohesive document that the Old and New Testaments are merged together and, and they, they're they in agreement. But the Jews had no real concept of hell. You know, they they were very much, you know, they had their own ideas about this afterlife, but it wasn't quite what the current day Christians would, would call it. And so, yeah, it, it seems like hell is this concept that's changed over the centuries and millennia. And what we're seeing now you look at all the different denominations of Judaism and Christianity today. Now, this is the result of all these centuries, is, is that we have this wide spectrum of who actually qualifies for punishment, and what does that look like, and how long is it? And it's like non-believers just can't take the believers seriously until they figure out what they're doing get their stories straight, get into agreement, you know, it, it, it's, I think that's just the biggest problem is nobody can just come up with this objective measurement stick and say, this is how we're doing things. Blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, and, and, and on top of all that, you know, you, you tell this story to a young kid Someone who's, who's pre-teens, someone who's a teenager, whatever, whatever age, they're not ready to handle that. You know, you tell them, hey, if you lie, if you steal, if you cheat, whatever, you know, whatever things they can do at, at the young age, um, then that's a sin and you're going to hell unless you ask for forgiveness and all that. Then you create this lifestyle where it's all about constantly trying to stay ahead of that rolling boulder you know where it's like anything you do wrong anything you do that's that's um breaking you know the ten commandments it, it's a sin 
you're you're constantly in this stage of what if I died right now? What if I got in a car crash? I, I'm, I'm lost, you know, and and it's this anxiety, right? You're constantly trying to figure out if you've brought yourself up to date. You know, have I asked forgiveness for all the sins that I've done? Well, I don't know. I can't remember everything I've done. And that's that's what's really silly about the even the evangelical mindset is like they they have the idea that at any moment you can lose your salvation you could have done everything correct but all of a sudden like you happen to be walking through the store and you grabbed an ink pen shoved it in your pocket okay you just stole you know a buck 50 from walmart now you're instantly guilty of going to hell despite everything you've done up to that point now not everyone uh, thinks that way. Not everyone holds to that model of you can lose your salvation. There's there's some Christian denominations that say, okay, once you've done the right steps, you're good. Nothing is going to, um, you know, destroy your chances of getting into heaven. And again, it, it seems like there's all these extreme different perspectives on, on whether someone's qualified to go into hell or heaven and, and it just doesn't make any sense but but that trauma of constantly being in fear of if I died right now would I go to hell or not some people really struggle with that I think personally I didn't um I struggled with that while I was in the church but once I got out I I really didn't have that fear stuck in my head, you know, it's just like, this is all a big fable. It, it doesn't, it doesn't really have any power over me. And I, and I didn't let it get to me. So it depends on the personality. Some people are just much more susceptible to those fears and those, those struggles. And yeah, that's why we can't just go around telling everybody you're going to burn like a chunk of grease, you know, for a million years. It's, it's, it's not productive. It's not advancing society. It's not helping people be better. We're just, we're just constantly living in fear and, that, and that's traumatizing. That doesn't make our lives any better. It just means you're constantly under stress and anxiety. So, <laughs> you know, and, and what's funny is on top of all of that, people that know, or at least, okay, they think hell is a real place. Those people are out committing every kind of sin you can imagine. You know, like it, it doesn't stop people from being, from being human beings. It does not. It, that's what's so crazy about this. And to me, it kind of points to people don't actually believe or they, they say they believe, but they really don't. Um, tying into that concept of hell, we think about like, okay, you're in a city of, you know, my town is 40,000 people. Um, the church had 150. All right, I'm back. There was, um, some water inspection issue water leak and so they needed someone to look around so <clears throat> i'm in a town of 40,000 people church at 150 people that's a lot of people in your immediate vicinity that are all essentially lost and you think they're going to hell and penn and teller did a bit on this it was really interesting and, and not penn and teller but the um but just Penn, he was talking about if you really, truly believed this concept of eternal punishment and eternal reward, for that matter, then you would be doing everything you possibly could to reach all these people that you think are lost, right? Like, if you see a big truck headed towards a person... And you know they're going to die unless you do something. How do you, you know, the way he phrased it, 
how badly do you have to hate them to just say, oh, I'm just going to walk away and let them get run over. And in the same vein of thought, how badly do you have to hate someone to not try to proselytize, not trying to reach them? But like, how much effort are they really putting in? You know, most Christians, uh, the ones I knew anyway, we'd go out Saturday afternoon, Saturday mornings and knock some doors. We'd hand out little flyers. And that was it. We didn't put a ton of effort into this outreach and proselytizing the rest of the week because you had a normal life to live. You know, you had to work a job. You had to, you know, hang out, have fun. You couldn't just do that nonstop. But if you really believed that hell was a, was a genuine place and heaven was a genuine place, you would be putting a lot more effort into it. That's just, that's just my opinion, you know, but it's also the opinion that I think is shared by others and it's been more, people have said it better, but yeah, I, I just think we have to move on from this, you know, this concept of hell because it, it creates so many more problems than it really solves. And I don't think there's any good reason to, to believe it exists. So that's my take on, on hell. We just did a podcast episode recently, last week, about why I think heaven isn't that great of a concept either. But I wanted to do a full video, more of a long form, tackling the concept of hell. Because I think it's it's more important that we dismantle hell before we dismantle heaven. Like, on the priority list, hell's at the top because of the psychological trauma it creates, the additional stress and anxiety that's unnecessary. And that's where, um, that's my take on it. So guys, uh, leave a comment, like, subscribe, share your thoughts on what you think about hell. Uh, by all means, check out the podcast and the blog, TikTok channel. All of this is under the headline, Naked Pentecostalism. And I hope everyone had a great time watching. Hope you learned something. Hopefully it challenges you. But we will catch you on the next one. All right, peace out.